All right, gang, I'm introducing another new house on the channel with a giveaway as well. We've got a worldwide giveaway this time of a full bottle of a fragrance that I'm gonna to talk to you about today from a new house called the Cologne House from Egypt. If you're curious to learn about this house and find out about five of their fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian, and today I'm talking about the Cologne House, a brand new house, new house, new brand, called the Cologne House, but they are making fragrances that are Eau de Parfum concentration. At least the ones that I'm gonna to talk to you about today are uh, in Eau de Parfum concentration, and the fragrances sell for 100 ml for $84, so they're fairly inexpensive. A great collection of fragrances, although the fragrances that I'm gonna to talk to you about are fragrances that I've experienced before, but I think they've done a pretty good job creating these fragrances. And the way I'm gonna do the video is let you know about my favorite favorite from the brand first and then work my way down to my least favorite and again this is just a preference for me after testing these fragrances out you might do the complete opposite uh, of me and, and you know make uh, the number five that I'm going to talk to you about the fifth fragrance I'm going to talk to you about today might be your uh, you know favorite the first favorite uh, of the bunch but it's a new house from uh, Egypt as I said the Cologne house very inexpensive fragrances one full bottle giveaway of the uh, one of the fragrances I'm going to talk to you about today it's your choice but we're going to start out with uh, the first one it's bergamot in C major this is a musical themed uh, collection of fragrances called the Cologne house I think it makes sense to call it the Cologne House uh, for us in the United States who are still using that term Cologne in fragrances. I like to, pr I prefer to call it the, pr you know, fragrance when I'm, you know, uh, talking about fragrances. But uh, it might make sense to a lot of folks here in the States who are not used to, uh, you know, calling fragrances uh, fragrance, uh, but they, you know, keep calling it cologne and things like that. So the Cologne House's Bergamot in C Major is my favorite of the collection. It was a bit challenging to figure out my favorite, but after testing it and things like that, this t turned out to be my favorite. But I have to be honest, smelling this fragrance on strip does not do it justice. You have to wear it. And when you wear it, you'll realize and discover its complexities. Because even though it's called Bergamot in C major, uh, it's not all about Bergamot here. Uh, it's a lot more going on. And it kind of falls flat on the strip, but on my skin, it comes alive. It features notes of Bergamot, banana, lavender, nutmeg, incense, geranium, cedarwood, and vetiver. A lot of different notes in here, but it's quite woody. It's got the cedarwood and vetiver in here for sure. There's aromatic touches here with the lavender and the geranium, which kind of needs a uh, for uh, to have a bit of a backbone. Of course, you've got the cedarwood and vetiver, but you've got this more of a, a stronger note of uh, notes of lavender and geranium to kind of add some herbal touches and aromatic touches. And of course, as I said, give you that kind of a backbone. So there's incense in here, light, very lightly smoky. And then of course, some warmth from the nutmeg. The only oddball note in this one is the banana. So there is that kind of unique fruitiness and light tropicality that you get from bananas but it's a very, very faint uh, experience in this particular fragrance. It's more about the bergamot, as I said, lots of it up top. It's a juicy fragrance, but eventually it settles to become uh, aromatic, and then of course, uh, woody when it's drying down. But it's great, it smells fantastic. You can totally wear it in the summertime, I think. It's not going to choke you, even though it has these kind of, you know, the warmth of the nutmeg and the smokiness of the incense, and of course the aromatics and the woods. It could be kind of a more complex wear during the heat of the summertime. So Bergamot in C major is the first fragrance and my favorite from the collection. All right, up next at number two, I'm surprised at this one uh, because I don't generally love this particular note, but I love it in this particular fragrance. Although it was kind of a tie between the third one, but I'm going to go with this one. It's Osmanthus in a major. And Osmanthus is a flower that is used as a tea to drink. It's a flower, but it's used as a tea, as I said, in China or in Asia. And then also it smells of uh, stone fruit, like apricots is mostly what I get here. Uh, and then also, a tea, uh, there's a leatheriness, not only the tea vibe, but there's definitely some leatheriness in here as well. So it's osmanthus, tea, jasmine, neroli, tuberose, pineapple, white musk, and they've thrown in a funky note again. In the last one, we had the banana, but in this one, we have chalk. So the osmanthus shines in this particular fragrance, and I feel like this is a perfect spring fragrance. You definitely have the fruity qualities of the osmanthus 
flower. Uh, sometimes Osmanthus, when it takes on that whole leatheriness, it might not smell as good for me because uh, I don't like it at that time too much. But here we have its freshness, its fruitiness, totally shine here in this particular fragrance. And with the addition of the tea note in here, along with the jasmine, neroli, and tuberose, it's totally a beautiful floral bouquet. A little twist with the osmanthus because of its fruitiness, contrasted with the jasmine and the tuberose. Of course, the neroli adds the kind of citrus floral touches in here. But everything else after that, we've got pineapple, so it does add a little, or accentuates a little bit of the apricotty fruitiness from the osmanthus with a little bit more of a tropical fruitiness from the pineapple. And again, that note, the chalk note in here, I think it's pretty faint. It's just something to add to accentuate the smell of the other notes to me. So it doesn't come off very chalky to me. It's very, very fresh in this particular fragrance because I'm left with beautiful white musk here, very, very clean. And even though typically osmanthus can go leathery in this particular fragrance, I don't get much leather, which is perfect because I want the fruitiness and its kind of freshness from the osmanthus note to remind me of something apricotty, perhaps peachy or nectarine and things like that. So it's a really beautiful wear. Again, uh, both of these fragrances, I, I feel like the bergamot and the osmanthus are perfect for spring and summer wear, but mostly summer because they're very, very fresh and, uh, you know, fruity floral type of fragrances. Well, in this case, the osmanthus is fruity floral. The bergamot's more citrus aromatic woody. So the third fragrance from this house that I enjoy the most is ginger in D major. So ginger fragrances are pretty interesting. I really love ginger as an ingredient to eat in foods and cuisine and things like that. And I also like smelling that particular note as well because there's definitely a very fragrant smell, very zingy, very uh, you know, it's got a kick, it's got a bite, a zing to it, uh, and uh, I really enjoy it in fragrances. In this particular fragrance though, Ginger in D major, the ginger is meshed with lots of wood, so there's definitely a dusty, powdery woodiness in this particular fragrance that is contrasted with the ginger note. But it features notes of ginger, there's ink, cardamom, vetiver, cashmiran, mimosa, latex, lemon, and leather. So even though there's not the mention of a ton of different woody notes, I feel like the vetiver in here is totally strong, it does have this kind of um, dry uh, woods uh, experience. But throw in that mimosa, the mimosa is powdery, so there's definitely a powdery touch here. It does have a little bit of citrusiness and spices thrown in with this one as well. And then you have that funky latex note in it. You know these... Uh, uh, really odd notes that they've thrown in these fragrances are not the prominent notes. So if you're kind of turned off by reading the notes like that, you're thinking, God, why, why would I want to wear a, a fragrance that has latex? They're not the most prominent notes, at least for me they're not. You might think differently when you smell them because people smell things uh, differently. So double check before you buy a full bottle of this. But for me, the latex is not prominent. For me, it's a very powdery, dusty ginger fragrance experience, which to me, it's that zing that I like, that bite, that spice in ginger fragrances, and it's definitely carried in here, highlighted in here with the ginger in D major. So this is the third fragrance uh, from the collection that I enjoy. So I should also mention the first two fragrances were fresher, and by the time we get to the ginger, it's definitely, there's more density there. And then finally with the last last two fragrances. They're the stronger of the collection. Uh, the saffron is uh, number four. It's saffron and E major. Saffron, once again, is a aromatic spice, but it also has leathery accords, so it creates a leather, which is quite nice. For me, in this one, the saffron totally shines with the rose, so it's a rosy saffron note, but very spicy and woody as well. It's saffron rose coffee. There's sugar, cardamom, suede leather, brandy, and sandalwood. This one doesn't have that kind of a funky note that's thrown in with the other uh, three fragrances, and this one definitely is saffron forward. It's a total saffron bomb. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, and the leatheriness shines through and there's also suede in this particular fragrance. So the, uh, the leatheriness from the saffron and the suede make for a kind of a leathery fragrance experience. But it's very, very spicy. It's almost like red hot, even though they don't have the, you know, like cinnamon in here to create that kind of red hot feel because there's definitely warmth in this one, even though saffron to me is not necessarily a very warm spice. But uh, 
there's one thing that I noticed when I was wearing this particular fragrance. It's got a soapiness. I don't know where I'm, that I'm getting that from, but perhaps it's the cardamom because there's definitely a soapy feel from cardamom sometimes. And I feel like in this particular fragrance, when it's meshed with the notes here, there's creates a kind of a soapy touch. So it's almost like saffron soap is what I'm wearing with this one. Very interesting, but it's very, very spicy. As I said, leathery as well. And just think red hots created from saffron spice instead of cinnamon. Anyway, saffron and E major is the fourth fragrance for you today. And then last but not least, the fifth fragrance I'm going to talk to you about today is Oud in A Minor. So this one was my least favorite fragrance. For some reason, I'm, maybe it's because I'm bored of Oud lately. I don't know why, but this one just didn't excite me as much. But for me, I felt like the saffron and the oud are the strongest in the collection. So if you're into the idea of stronger fragrances, definitely go for these two because the freshest ones were the bergamot and the osmanthus and the ginger is kind of in the middle of the, the two fragrances at both ends. But the oud in a minor features notes of leather with oud and there's quince, vetiver, tolu balsam, rice, oak wood, iris, sugarcane, and molasses. For me, I saw the note of molasses. I thought, maybe this is going to be very, very ambery. It didn't go very ambery. It's a dry fragrance. Once again, I wanted that molassesy kind of syrupiness in this fragrance and I didn't get that. There's definitely dry powdery touches with light sweetness. It's not a very sweet fragrance for me because I feel like the notes that are in here kind of tone down the sweetness, whatever sweetness we have. In this case, we've got the quince that offers the sweetness, the tolu balsam, the sugar cane and the molasses. But in the end, it's an easy to wear oud, fairly easy to wear oud. It didn't get animalic. It's definitely leathery. It's definitely powdery and also kind of has earthy and uh, le uh, you know, ambery touches when it's drying down. There's a little bit of a tiny little bit of a fruitiness in here. Not so much. It's that quince note, which rarely comes up in fragrances. And if you've ever smelled quince, you know, blossoms or the fruit, it's so fragrant. So I was really, really hoping that this would have that kind of very fragrant smell of the quince uh, fruit or the blossoms. But sadly, I didn't get much much of that with this one. It's more of a very, uh, you know, oody, leathery, uh, woody fragrance. So Oud in a minor is the fifth and final fragrance from the Cologne house. So let me know your thoughts on this collection of fragrances now that you've watched this video. What do you think about the collection of fragrances? They're very inexpensive, as I said, under $100 for 100 ml in Eau de Parfum concentration. And even though it's called the Cologne house, they are Eau de Parfum concentration fragrances. So it won't break your bank. They're priced at uh, kind of lower than designer fragrances now and when you're reading the names of the fragrances you know what you're going to get into whereas you got bergamot osmanthus ginger saffron and oud so it makes for it makes it easy for you to like pick something because you know what it's going to smell like because it has the name of that star note and the name of the fragrance. Anyway, uh, I hope you, uh, you enjoyed the video. Let's do the giveaway real quickly. It's one full bottle giveaway for one subscriber of this channel from the entire world. All you have to do is put down which fragrance sounds the best to you and also let me know what you liked about this video and put down your country where you're commenting from. If you are commenting from the USA, please put down your state and make sure you're subscribed, guys. Uh, I do check that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.